Hey guys, it's Mei Mei, and today we are starting our five cards with this stamp set. If you remember, this stamp set was late getting to us, so I promised that I would give you five cards using this set to make up for that, and I appreciate you being patient with me, as now it is here. So today we're going to make the first card, so it's going to be five videos, okay, five different cards, and in today's, we're not going to make just one card, we're going to make four cards, and we're going to use three pieces of cardstock to do it. So, I thought that'd be cool. So, a lot of numbers, but don't worry about it. It'd be easy. So, here's what we got. Three pieces of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. This is um, just white cardstock. I'm going to take one piece to start with and my trimmer, and I'm going to cut these down to four by five and a quarter. So, if you're familiar with A2 cards, that's going to get us the first mat on our card. So we're gonna be matting white on top of white, but I wanted to do that to give it a little bit of dimension. But I think this will be really pretty. We're gonna do another kind of different technique in a minute. So here, now it's by five and a quarter. So from one sheet of car sock, I will get four of these. Now from that sheet, you'll have these pieces left. Don't get rid of these, we can use these. So I'm just gonna set those aside for now. And we're gonna start to work on these first four pieces. So the first thing I wanna do is create my background using markers. And I've chosen these markers in this orientation. I've got a set of yellow and oranges, and then I've got a set of um, pink, blue, and kind of a teal, um, no, pink, green, and kind of a teal blue. And here's what I wanna do. I'm not gonna use my usual bullet point. I want to use this end. So I totally saw this on Pinterest, obviously. You know, I'm always on Pinterest looking at stuff. And what I wanna do is I wanna create three colors in kind of a squiggle. And I'm gonna take this marker and starting at the bottom, I'm just going to kind of go across like this. I just think this is so pretty, the way this kind of creates this, um, distressed marker look like it's not a perfect image we're not looking for that we're looking for some white spaces so in this technique what we're trying to do is keep the white spaces okay and I'm not looking for perfection so I'm going to run this one across as well I am wanting to use the whole shape of the nib so this is kind of that the chisel nib so I do want that and see how I'm already getting to the point where I'm wanting to cover all the white, I gotta leave some, leave some of the white. That's what we're trying to do. And then just use some paint. Look, I have to take the stickers off because I never use the chisel end of my marker. And I'm kind of glad this is kind of getting me an excuse to use it. So I'll take this one out. And now at the top. And again, I just want something like that. I'm not looking to cover the whole card or to make you know a solid color out of this. This is what I'm looking for. So that's background number one. Now we're going to use the same stamp set on them in a few minutes to decorate this area, but I want to show you this background number one. Now number two is very much like it. Remember I told you that I had these colors you could also use? It would be that same technique I just showed you, but let me show you number two. So you guys will remember I just got these in store and we had a sale on these recently. They're buy three, get one, and that sale may still be going. I do not know for sure. But these all come together in these packs where the colors are together. I'm going to pull out these three colors because I feel like they will do exactly what I'm doing here. See how these colors work together. And I'm going to start with the darkest color at the bottom. And I'm doing exactly the same thing I just did. I'm just wanting to show you with a different set of markers. So no matter what you have, you'll see that it works. Now this one's dark and it's going to be juicy. So I'm just going to run it across something like this and just get myself some streaks there. Not too many of that color because it's dark. I'm going to be stamping on top of it, so I don't want to go too dark. And then I'm going to run this one across the top. This one's going to be kind of a fall colored um, card. And then this one. So I just let the, um, the marker pack kind of dictate my colors. It just kind of said these are the three colors that would work the best together for this technique, and that's what I'm going with. And see how broken? That's what we want. Also, notice I'm not going to the bottom. That's where our um, sentiment's going to live. So there's our first two backgrounds. They're so pretty. Wait till they're done. Okay, next technique. That was one technique, markers, but I wanted to use two different markers. Next technique. For this technique, I'm going to be using my mini ink blending tools. I think these are so adorable. I haven't even used these yet. I've used my big ones, but I want to use the minis today. And I'm going to use three different colors of oxide ink. Now, I'm only going to be using two tools. So, I'm going to start with my lightest color first. And technically, I don't need to use two tools. Matter of fact, I'll use one and show you how it works. So, that way I don't have to wash them both. But these are washable. So, once you use them one time, you can just wash them afterwards before you do your next project. So, I'm going to get some of this beautiful 
beautiful dried marigold onto my um, blending tool. And very much like we did a while ago, I'm going to be streaking across this card. Now this color is pale. I don't know how well it'll show up on camera because my camera tends to like to blow everything that is pale out so you can hardly see it. And look, I'm looking for some of those brush strokes. Like I want, I'm not trying to do a perfect blend here. I'm wanting some of these brush strokes to show, to kind of break it up, okay? So there's a little bit. Let's do another one. Sympathy cards are hard, y'all, because you you just don't, you want to be so soft with your cards, with your sympathy cards, or at least I feel like a softer look is best. So that's kind of why I thought these little techniques would be good for your sympathy cards. Now, right underneath, we're going to blend in some blue and see how light and beautiful that is. And again, I want some of those brush strokes. I'm just wanting some color, some of the brush in there. And if you leave some white, that's fine too. If you get a perfect circle, that's fine too. It does not matter. So I went from my lightest color to my next lightest color and now to my darkest color. And this way I don't have to change out my tool. I can just wash it when I'm done. All right, so I'm gonna rub this out here. You can rub it onto your cloth if you wanna get some of the color off of it. But I pretty much got the color off onto my work surface. Now this is going to be different. This is a green, it's gonna be darker. So I'm gonna be light handed at first and see when and how I need to adjust. And they can blend into each other or not. It does not matter. And look how beautiful. And I know it's just color right now, but just wait till you see the finished card. All right, so there is technique number two. So first was markers. Second is your blending tools. And third, technique number three is ink dragging. If you know me at all, you know I love to drag ink. Now, this is not the first time I've done this technique. I've done this exact technique in the past, but it kind of inspired this particular sympathy card, and so I wanted to show you. So I love the shape of these Memento um, ink pads, and I like to use it to my advantage here. And let me show what I mean. If you'll lay this guy on its side and do a drag across, you kind of get that kind of half circle shape. Do you see that? It's kind of a um, a curve there off into, I don't know what that end is, but that's what I'm looking for. So then I'm going to take, that was yellow or dandelion. This is tangelo. And I'm going to do the same thing, touch down and drag. And you see how I get that little half circle edge? I love that. It looks like I've painted it or somehow done it with a paintbrush and I haven't. I've just taken ink and done this. Same thing here, that half circle. And look how beautiful that is. And it is so easy to do just with three ink pads and it will work with any ink pad. It's just with these, you get that kind of cool circular or kind of half circle shape. Now, as you know, I'm gonna be using my sympathy stamp set for the sentiment, but I want to use these dandelions that are from the Sorry stamp set for the beautiful like um, spray on top of our background. So I've got my Misty out, okay? I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna bring one of our pieces over. I'm going to sit in this corner. I don't know that that's where it's going to end up because I'm going to lay these dandelions out and see where they need to go. And I'm not exactly sure which ones I'm going to use yet either. I think I'm going to use this large one to go across like this. And I don't want it to um, be perfectly in the color. I kind of want it to go off and on the color. And then I was thinking about adding this one and possibly this one too but I'm not sure. I'm just going to play around and see if I like them all together or if I just like the two. I think I just like the two here like so. So I'm going to let those be and I'm going to pick those up with my Misty here. Okay, so I've got those over here. I'm going to put a magnet down just to hold this into place. One reason is I may need to stamp this twice just to make it dark enough, but I'm going to tell you a trick. I'm going to use pigment ink for this. I'm not using my memento on top of here. The reason is this. These inks that I use, now not the oxide because the oxide kind of sits on the surface, but like these guys right here and the dye ink of the memento, they sink into the cardstock. This one dries on top and that's what I want because I want it to be a very bold um, pop of color. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to ink up my dandelions. Like, okay, so I'm going to ink this and uh, lay this over like so. And I'm using the Misty here because I'm just going to run through and do all four of these. Look how beautiful that is. It's just so pretty on that background. We're not done. We're going to come back and add a little more as well. But all of my backgrounds are going to get the same treatment um, to start with. So I'm going to ink this up and do it on all four. I am going to stamp this one down twice. I really don't need to, but I think it might make it pop a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. 
while I've got it here and because I'm using the Misty, I can, I might as well do it. Perfect. That just made it a little darker. You could certainly heat emboss this because this is pigment. You could pour some clear heat embossing powder on there or even some black and emboss that to make it even darker, but I think it's beautiful. While I have the Misty out, I'm going to go ahead and set it for my sentiment as well. And the sentiment I'm going to use is the word sympathy here. And I think I'm going to add just width above it. Now, because I stamped all of my dandelions with the Misty, I should be able to lay this out and go through and stamp everything just fine and it'll line up. So let me put my width in place. It likes to stick to my fingers, but if you use an eraser on a pencil, you can move it around without it sticking. There we go. Let's get that right down there. And you could certainly um, stamp these separately. Like if you wanted that width to nestle a little tighter, you could stamp them separately, which is probably a better idea, but I just want to show you how you can do them all at the same time. So with sympathy in that far corner, right? And then I'm going to put my magnet down for safekeeping. And again, I'm going to use my black pigment. You could change the ink. Um, here you won't be covering up as much of the color underneath, so you could change it, but I'm just going to go ahead and use the black pigment ink. That's pretty, I love that. We're still not done. We're gonna add one more little stamp to that, but we're gonna run through and do all of these the same way. For the last little part of my stamping, I'm gonna grab this little piece here that's like a single petal from one of the little um, pieces we're using here, and I'm gonna put it around. I wanna mention something to you too. If you only have the Sari set, you could do sympathy cards with this as well. So if you have this set, you can do the same thing that I'm doing today. So I'm gonna get that single little guy off and put them on my block. And then I'm gonna look at each one of these individually and they'll probably be all different. But where this little guy is kind of half of one, I'm gonna make it look as though some are kind of floating away into the sky. And you can just be kind of random with this. With this. And you'll, you'll like some better than others, some layouts better than others when you do it. But you know, it's just a little extra something. I like to work in odd numbers, so I'm gonna go with three. And I'm just gonna do that on the same, on all of them the same way. A trick with these kind of stamps when they've got a lot of little fine lines like this, don't overpress. Let the stamp just kind of kiss the page and don't overpress. It will help. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of something by using my corner rounder. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to be putting this white on to a white card. And anytime you can add movement and texture when you're doing that, it helps. Because I'm gonna pop this up onto a white card base. You could totally put this on a color card base, like a black or anything that coordinates with your inks. But I just think it's pretty to sometimes in these sort of instances, do kind of tone on tone. I'm gonna do two at one time here. And we'll have these ready to mount to our cards. So you remember, we are using three sheets of cardstock today, right? So now I'm gonna cut my other two down. So this is my other two, eight and a half by 11, and I'm cutting them in half at four and a quarter. And I do mine the long way, but you can do them in half at five and a half and get two bases. Either way works, as long as you're cutting these sheets in half. So there's my four card bases. Now we just need to score these. So I'm gonna score them in half at five and a half. And while I have them here, I'm gonna fold each one just while I've got it into my scoreboard so I get my score mark made. Then I'm gonna push that into the corner. And if I have to kind of retrain here, I'm fine with that in case I got a little bit off on my scoring. But using my scoreboard like this helps me get a really nice square card. I should say rectangle, right? A really nice rectangle. So my card fronts, I'm gonna go ahead and just turn them all upside down. And I'm gonna put my foam tape on the back. Now, before I put my card fronts on, I'm going to do the insides of my cards. And what I'm going to do is stamp a sentiment right inside of here. And I'm using the Misty again because I'm going to be making four. Again, if you're just making one, you don't really have to have your Misty for this, but it does come in handy. This sentiment is off of the um, With Sympathy set. And it says, thinking of you during this difficult time. So I'm just lining that up as straight as I can. And we'll pick that up with the Misty door. And now this, I'm going to stamp in all four of my cards. So 
So now to assemble, I have my four card bases here, and these are the pieces that we stamped. I'm gonna peel the backer off of this foam, and then I'm gonna place this on the front of the card. And it's so pretty to have the shadow of the front. Can you see how it has the little shadow? I love that. That's why I cut down that. Now, did you have to do that? Not necessarily. You could have made four cards with just two pieces of cardstock if you did your coloring directly on. But sometimes, depending on the cardstock that you're using, your um, inks can bleed through. And this is just a good way if you have a thinner cardstock to be able to um, make these cards and get the same look. And remember, three pieces of cardstock. That is nothing to make these guys. Three pieces. So there's that one. Be sure to check and make sure your sentiment's where it's supposed to be. That would be not fun, but it's not the end. You could still fix it, but you don't want to um, get your, your uh, sentiment on the wrong side. And there we go. Four sympathy cards with our sympathy stamp set and our sorry stamp set and using some of our products. Like I love to use my markers here and then some of my inks here plus my blending tool. Super fun. I don't know how long that took me. I didn't time it, but it was super quick to get four cards made. So if you've got a lot of cards to send out, this is a great way to do it. And remember, you don't have to use just this sentiment. This technique will work with all kinds of things. Imagine doing this same background with florals or butterflies or you name it. It'd be so beautiful. So that is sympathy set card video number one. I owe you four more and they're all coming. My plan is to have them consecutively, so be watching. They'll be coming day after day, but I'll put them in a playlist together regardless. So if they don't go up every single day, I'll have the five in a playlist for you. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're interested in what I do, if you like how I do things on my channel, subscribe to the channel. Be sure to like the video. That lets YouTube know, hey, Mama's doing something cool. I like what she's doing over there. And you can get notifications on our channel if you'll click the bell and tell it to give you all notifications. Then when a video goes up, you'll be able to get notified about that. Hey, thanks so much. If you make these cards, you know I want to see them. Head to my customer gallery at maymaymadeit.com and share with me what you're making. I want to see what you're doing. We love it. And if you need more inspiration like this, there's more than 2,000 photos over there using products that we carry. So there's inspiration for you right there in one place. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. Until next time, bye-bye.